Hi everyone, welcome back to Unicorn Dust Designs. My name is Sammy and on this channel we do DIYs with signs and there is always tons of laughter. And I mean tons of laughter on this channel. Today I am taking you back, back, oldies but goodies, a bunch of trash to treasure videos from when I first started up until now. So I hope you guys enjoy. I also wanted to say thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. I will be telling you more about them later in this mega video. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, you guys, our first DIY is going to be this adorable, I don't know if you're going to guess it, reversible uh, toilet organizer. I have been making these and they can range anywhere from 20 to $30. And I made this for about hmm, two. <laughs> so I found this box at a garage sale. It was a dollar. It looks like it may have been, I don't know, a bread box or something at one point. I have no idea. It looks like it's missing like a lid. So I knew we could turn this in to something. So first we're going to clean it because uh, we don't know where it's been. You know what I'm saying? So get that Lysol wipe if you have any and clean that up because it was dirty. And um, this box was so awesome. It looked like it was handmade. It was stunning. So we are going to be using um, some stencils. I designed these on my Cameo. I am using 651 Permanent vinyl. If you guys are interested in these, please just drop a comment down below and I will link them to my Etsy shop for you. Um, I will also put the size of this box of my decals, all of that stuff. So I'm placing my decal on one side of it and then we're going to go ahead and peel that back. As I've mentioned before, you guys, this transfer paper is awesome. Got it on Amazon. Okay, that vinyl is on. Now we're reversing it and we are going to be using this round plaque. I got these at Walmart. You can also find like random ones at Dollar Tree, anywhere you guys. So I'm cutting this in half because we have that circle in the middle and I'm going to be placing it on the left side and the right side. And I'm keeping that circle in the middle just so I can keep reference as to where to place my vinyl on this board. Now, if you don't have one of these exactly, you guys, just go to your local thrift store, garage sales, because they have tons of like boxes that are for decorative purposes. Like you would fill with flowers, like planters. That's, that's what I'm thinking of. Planters. Um, that would work perfectly with this. You could also stack, um, a bunch of horizontal, horizontal, rectangle boxes from the Dollar Tree onto each other and make it like a shiplap looking one that would be super cute as well. And then over our vinyl, we're going to put some white linen chalk paint from Rust-Oleum. I'm just using a chippy brush and I just do one coat, just making sure to cover all of the vinyl with the chalk paint because obviously we want our letters to show through. And I get like the sides and everything, but I leave the middle, the wood color. I think it's awesome. I think it adds dimension. And if you guys watch any of my wood sign videos, you know, I love to show as much wood as possible. So now we're just weeding out our stencil. It came off super easy. And I absolutely love that stain color with this white. It's just super chic. It it screams a farmhouse. I will also link the um, fonts for these down below, you guys. All right, so there she is. Now I am using this transfer. This is from Dollar Tree. And these transfers are so easy to use. I did have to, I tried this with acrylic white chalk paint. For some reason, it would not stick. So I ended up, no, I tried it with, was it, I don't know. I had tried one before. Luckily, I had two packs of these on hand and it would not stick for the life of me. So then I got acrylic white paint and lightly brushed it on, let that dry, and then transferred this on. So now that all that's done, I want to distress this and I want to smooth out all of those ridges from the chippy brush. So I'm taking 80, no, 220 grit sandpaper. So it's a really smooth sandpaper 
and I'm getting all of the corners and edges first and then I'm going over my lettering and this will just smooth it out. It'll give it a little bit more cleaner rustic look. Does that make sense? <laughs> probably not and then we're gonna clean this off and since it's going in the bathroom obviously we want to spray it down this is a clear matte spray from rust-oleum and now you guys all we have to do is put on our little round to cover the um, that little oval that was on our board and I cannot wait for you guys to see a close-up of this at the end it is gorgeous Look at how cute that is, you guys. All right. Hi, right, y'all. I hope you liked the first Trash to Treasure DIY upcycle. Um, I decided to do one of these because there were a lot of Trash to Treasure videos that I did when I first started my channel that maybe only have like 300 views on them. So I'm like, I am pretty sure a lot of these subscribers that I have now have never seen these beautiful trash to treasure videos. So I hope that they inspire you to create, maybe go to a garage sale this spring and summer, go to the thrift stores, pick up things because the possibilities are endless as to what you can turn them into. So you guys, if you're digging me, if you're digging my channel, if you're digging all of these DIYs, please make sure you like and make sure you subscribe to my channel. I also do have another channel called Crafting a Healthy Life. It's a lot of tips and tricks and motivation for living a healthy lifestyle. If you could go down to my description box and go like and subscribe, I would truly, truly appreciate it. All right, you guys, enough with that. Let's go ahead and get back into all of these DIYs. Look at how gorga that is, okay? So these are all the supplies we're going to be using. We have, um, so this cabinet door a girlfriend gave to me for free. And you guys, these cabinet doors are heavy. And it was like a shiny white. I know I did not want it shiny, which it ended up being shiny anyways. So I take it outside and I sprayed it with a matte white chalk paint. And then I am spraying blessed. I did have to sand this down like a lot. It was toe up, but I didn't record that. Um, so sprayed this with blue, let everything dry. And then I'm taking these Pioneer Woman napkins that I got on clearance at Walmart. I grabbed two packs of them. They were gorgeous. There's these and there's another one, but I chose to go with these. And I've had them sitting down in my basement and I've been waiting to feel inspired to use these and this is definitely the board. Look at how cute her napkins are. It has the little recipe in it and everything. I love it. So I'm just sizing this up on the cabinet door to figure out like placement, where I want it, if I want it to be sporadic or just on the corners. And then if you watch my calendar one, I'm doing this exactly like the calendar. I am cutting every little piece of the white out. If you don't get all the white, it's perfectly fine because the backdrop is white anyways. So it won't be a huge deal if there is white left on it. You could even leave the polka dots on it if you want. It that all depends on you. And you guys, you could do these with any napkins. Um, you can go to Habitat for Humanity, for cabinet doors, they have tons of them. Look on Facebook Marketplace, or you can just do this with like a wood blank. So you could go to like Hobby Lobby and get a wood piece. If you have wood in your garage, you can do this. Um, it is so much fun to mod podge. Everybody's been correcting me on how I say it. Um, on napkins and projects like coasters. You guys know I like coasters. Okay, so did I n forget to cut that part? Okay, now, I'm all, uh, hello, there's a big white chunk missing, girlfriend. Uh, so I do clean this up, and then I don't usually get worried about taking the two-ply off, like that extra layer that's on the napkin, but this one was already coming off anyways, um, so I went ahead and just took it off, Make sure you go slowly, especially if you have like those little leaves or like a lot of details because it could potentially rip um, them off. So just 
go super slow. Take your time. All right, there we go. So that side is off and we are getting ma uh, Mod Podge, which um, I have the matte version here. And I'm going to, wherever I went, I, I don't know, sorry, let's, oh, there we go, there I am. So, Mod Podge. And I'm going to put it on the cabinet door, and then I just put a little on the napkin, but then it was kind of having some weight to it, and I was like, ooh. Oh, and don't do that on your cabinet door, because it left like a texture. <sighs> Frustrating. Okay, so now that is sticking, oh, leaf. Oh, get on there. Um, and then we are just going to take that Mod Podge and the brush again. These brushes I got from Walmart. Love them. And um, we are just going to put this directly on top of this napkin. Now, especially with this napkin in particular, since it had like the white on the flowers and little white in the background, there were some instances where it kind of ripped just a little, but it didn't really matter because it just looked like a part of the flower. So you'll see, I think in the next one, on the next side, I think I show you the next side, that I do rip it a little, but it, it, it looks totally fine after. So now that I know that I love that side, I'm definitely gonna do the other corner. And do you see right there on, like right there, right there, I rip it. But it almost just looks like it's a part of the flower so not even tripping over here you know what I'm saying um so go ahead and then I wanted it all obviously the same you know clear or matte so I went and I took my brush and I put matte uh, the Mod Podge all over it but one it left a texture right where like I had put that Mod Podge on the napkin directly then it left like so much texture even like around i don't know it just it was really weird i was so sad that that happened but it is what it is you know just go with the flow and there's hank wanting to bug mom as usual okay so you guys the texture it was driving me nuts so i was like maybe i can hide it a little by adding some polka dots so this is a dauber i got the set from hobby lobby when you use this dauber make sure you completely cover the dauber with paint and then do some little dots to the side on a piece of paper get the excess off these things work so great and I love them and what's so funny is I this matched exactly to the napkin which I will show you at the end it is so funny but did you see all that texture driving me nuts so right here I'm adding d rings d hooks whatever you want to call them you could I could have used like I guess like those holes and stuff but since they're round I don't know I don't know I didn't think about it until after I was editing my video and I'm like I guess you could have just used those holes to hang it but you know let's do some more work okay so right here you guys I'm going to use E6000 for this and hot glue now the reason I keep on like lifting it up and putting it on the cabinet door for reference is because there's pieces that are hanging over you know that little ridge that like dips down and I don't want the hot glue or the E6000 dripping down onto that so I'm just trying to get the spots that are going to hit the cabinet door if that makes sense so that way I don't have any like dripping or hot glue or E6000 showing so now we're going to put that on and that's it, you guys. And she is so pretty. Now look at this. It's so funny. Like the color matches exactly to the napkin, which of course I got inspired to do the polka dots because of the napkin. Look at how pretty that looks. Do you think anybody would know that like that was made with a free cabinet door and napkins? Don't think so. The blessed you guys I got at Michael's like two years ago and found it under a table the other day. So look at this. How funny is that? Like exact color on there. All right, you guys. I, as usual, appreciate you hanging out with me for watching these videos. Make sure you give this a thumbs up and subscribe because it really helps support my channel. 
and I was so, so excited to do this video and make these creations. I am somebody that like has to sit down and it just comes to me. I don't know if y'all are that way. If you are, comment down below. Um, but I hope you guys get inspired by these and they want, they make you want to go and create something. Our so. first trash to treasure project are going to be these three beautiful planters. They turned out absolutely amazing, you guys, and I'm so excited to share how I made these. So our first one is going to be a spaghetti can, and I'm just taking twine from the Dollar Tree and putting just a tiny bit of hot glue on the back of there, and I am going to wrap this around, but I'm going to do it on the little inner part of the ridges of the can, if that makes sense. So I'll show you right here. I'm gonna go around and then once I get to the back again, I'm kind of gonna go down one little notch and then continue wrapping. Now for this project, you do have to hot glue a little tiny baby spot on the back of each turn. And that is because if you do not, then your twine will end up moving and it will not stay in between those ridges. Um, I struggled with if I wanted to do like rust effect on this and I'm so glad I didn't because it really makes the, the aluminum pop through. So we're gonna keep on wrapping this down, hot gluing it. Make sure to keep your hot glue in one area. That way there is a back to your planter instead of having little hot glue dots everywhere. And then we're gonna speed this up because I do not think you want to uh, see me go around and around and around and around. And I mentioned this in majority of my videos, but those little finger protectors are absolutely amazing. Three pack, Dollar Tree. And the twine that I'm using in this video for my three planters is also from Dollar Tree. And here we go, let's speed through. I hope you guys are all enjoying your day. I hope you enjoy this video. Please hang out till the end because there's the cute little video at the end for you guys. It'll definitely make your day. Okay, so now we're gonna cut that end off. And I just made sure to hot glue my end piece over there. And this looks so good. I love that you could see the shiny aluminum through that. But we have an expiration date on here, which I did not want showing. And at first I tried rocks, didn't work. So then I'm taking some leftovers. And this is just from the Dollar Tree rope. I took it apart and braided it. And I used this for another project, which I'll link above. And we are going to hot glue this to the bottom and to the top of the can, just to give it a little bit more dimension. And like I said, I did try rocks, but for some reason the rocks would not stick to the aluminum. I don't, I don't know why, but I'm glad it didn't work out. Everything happens for a reason, right? Because this ended up turning out great and I was able to reuse something that has been sitting in my craft stash for a little bit. So after that, you are done with this planter and we're gonna move on to the second. All right, y'all, so Skillshare, what is Skillshare? Skillshare is an online learning community for creative people just like yourself with thousands of classes from illustration to watercolor to design to organization. Right now, I am currently taking a class, How to Be Organized by Miles Tools. It's an hour and 16 minutes, but what I love about these classes is they're broken up into chapters. So you can come back to them whenever you have the time to learn a little something. And you guys, with an annual membership of only $10 a month, it's so worth it to further your creativity and your knowledge of things that you are passionate about. So y'all, with the first thousand people that click the link in my description box, we'll get a free trial of Skillshare premium membership. It is so worth it, you guys. Try it out, you will not be disappointed. I'm gonna leave that link for you down in my description box as well as in my comments. I hope I hear you guys commenting down below that you signed up and what new classes you are going to be trying out this month.
using a butter box. If you guys don't have these, I don't know what you cooking with. Okay. I am taking um, some gray matte spray paint. I do give the outer box two coats and the inner part just one coat just so you can get where you might see um, once you put plants in. And then you guys, I realize I'm not recording, but that's okay because it's pretty simple. I just glued to the back just like I did with the first project and I am just wrapping it around over and over and over again. And then, I mean, every so often I will put another little dab of hot glue there just to keep my place because I wanted this to be kind of tight and it kept on wanting to move down the little container. So we are going to keep wrapping this around until we have basically an inch and a half or so left on the bottom half and you will see why and then we're going to finish that off and like I said in the previous one make sure your glue stays in one section now I'm taking these Dollar Tree little wood pieces this is my first time using them and I loved them I am going to be adding three of these branches to each corner of our container with hot glue. I try to kind of vary the colors up just, you know, to give it more, I, was, I don't know what I was gonna say, visually eye-catching, I don't know you guys, all right. But I love adding extra because after this I'm gonna add more because it's okay guacamole, I'm extra too. There we go. And we're gonna add those to all four corners. And there we go. Gosh, that was fast. Superpowers. Now we're gonna take our Dollar Tree pebbles, rocks, and I'm actually surprised with how often I've used these. Annan is very calming to me to try and kind of fit them together. I love doing this. I did this for a Father's Day project and just sat down in my work area and just enjoyed the quiet and piecing these together. So we are going to put these on all of this gray um, bottom and we're doing it all the way around. And I'm also gonna speed through this section because it is time consuming and I don't think you wanna watch all of that. So, as I said, most of this stuff is from Le Dollar Tree, which I live at. I love going to different Dollar Trees, you guys. Okay, there we go. I got my little helper here. He seems to be in most of my videos because he cannot stay out of my work area, but that's okay. Maybe he'll learn something and he'll be like the crafty DIY guy or something. If you guys have not watched his videos, he's hilarious. Look at how pretty that looks. So much texture, dimension, it looks amazing. I did not know where I was going with any of this, you guys. So once everything came together, I was very impressed. Okay, next we are taking a salsa jar. You guys, this is guacamole salsa from Walmart and it is so good. This reindeer moss, which y'all, uh, I've never used this before. And one, I am taking that out slowly because I'm like, holy crap, that is real and why doesn't anybody tell you how bad it stinks? I mean, this stuff is stinky. Let me tell you. Yeah. Mm. It goes away though. You get used to it. And now I'm just cutting it, kind of chop, chop, chopping it up into smaller pieces so that we get more out of it, one, and so that we don't have these huge bulky pieces sticking out. And then all we're doing, you guys, is hot glue in little sections at a time and then sticking some of that reindeer moss on top of it. And we're just patting it. And I don't, it doesn't burn or anything like that. The reindeer moss is pretty thick and it doesn't really come through either. And you're just going to repeat that step the whole way through. Now, as I'm doing this, I'm like, this is not looking how I envisioned it. Like I envisioned it like, flatter smoother texture I guess and this thing was looking like like a crazy mama hair day okay and I was not feeling it but then I think to myself you know what I wonder if we could like trim this maybe like a beard so 
I just keep going with it, see how it's gonna go. I'm still like, okay, this is poofy. So then I decide to take my scissors and kind of trim it up like a beard. And voila, I finally, it, it's coming together. I'm like, okay, this is what I was thinking. It's a lot smoother. It's not so bushy with like branches sticking out everywhere, which you guys, this stuff has branches in it too. I thought for one minute there was going to be a bug to pop out of this reindeer moss. I was scared for my life, but I'm safe. I'm okay. Don't worry about me. And you guys, we are done with that part. And now I'm taking the twine because we got to tie everything into each other. And it's the same cost concept as the two previous ones. We're just hot gluing a little dab to the back and then wrapping it around, wrapping it around, wrapping it around. Um, I love how they go together with just a simple detail like the twine. So you know that they're going to look great together. And I love that we were able to bring the outside elements inside and to be honest, like I said, I did not know where I was going with these projects. I almost didn't even make this reindeer moss one. And I'm so glad I did because it's kind of becoming a favorite for me. And this will look good in my house no matter what season it is. So there is that. So cute. Ooh, I get so excited when I see them. I gotta like pat myself on the back sometimes because... You never know what you can do when you just put your mind to it. And now I'm taking these greens, you guys. And I got these from Walmart. They finally stocked back up. And they are called, I'm digging in my bag right now. I'm sorry. It just says greenery picks. So one almost looks like a fern branch. And another one looks like, I don't know. And then these look like know some tropical bushes but they fit perfectly all I did was bend up the wire and look so pretty trash for sure to treasure and our second project you guys mm, okay all I did was use a dog food cardboard box I've been saving this anybody else save trash because I certainly do and I am taking, this is actually rope from uh, Home Depot, but you can definitely use the nautical rope from uh, Dollar Tree as well. This is, I think, a little thinner than the Dollar Tree rope though, but either way. So I'm hot gluing the bottom of the cardboard and I'm going to go around. You need to make sure to put like, not a generous, but like a good amount in your corners. You don't want it to like come up and get all over your rope but you need to make sure that you are pushing that rope into those corners pretty good and just holding it there for a minute because if you don't they want to pop back out before they can dry and if you don't press those in pretty good then you're going to have a bunch of gaps in your tray so you guys, this is super time consuming. If you want something that you can just shut your mind off, relax, and not be in your own head, this is definitely the project. No joke, it took me over an hour to do this. So you could only imagine how much cutting of the video I had to do. I was like, nobody wants to watch this for an hour. Even midway through, I was like, why did I do this? But once I saw the outcome, I was like, that's why you did it. It looks pretty awesome. Um, so you're just going to continue that round and round and round until you get to your center. And then I will slow this down and kind of show you how we go on to the inside uh, walls of the box and the outside. I do end up using two different colors, which originally was only because I ran out of this like natural looking color, but I'm so glad I did two different colors because I felt like it added more dimension to it and it was just visually more appealing than doing one natural color. Didn't want it to look like a, a one dimensional wicker basket, you know what I'm saying? All right, and then we just are putting those in 
tucking those hard in. There was like a little, little gap. So I just cut a little piece off, stuffed it in there, put some hot glue on. We were good to go. So I'm going to take more of this rope that I got from Home Depot. It is, I, I think it's a little less. You get 50 feet in a roll and I think it's $7. So uh, I think you're getting more for your money, but I'm not sure. I haven't calculated it. Okay, so I am putting the hot glue kind of like in between the rope and the cardboard. That way the rope could adhere partly to the cardboard and partly to your rope. And we are doing the same exact thing we did to the bottom, pushing those corners in so that you don't have huge gaps. And we are going to wrap that around you guys. All of this is going to be basically the same process. It's just time consuming, but beautiful. What kind of crafts do you guys do um, to kind of like shut off, escape the world, turn off your minds and just be because things like this are perfect projects the like rock thing I love it because I'm just kind of focused on fitting those pieces together all right now we're getting to the top and all I'm doing is now I'm putting the hot glue on those the ridges of the cardboard box and now I'm just basically traveling down the side and again I am trying to keep the hot glue partly on the cardboard and partly on the rope that way it's adhering to both of them and it'll be more stable more durable and you guys this thing is heavy I am like not even joking that thing is heavy and then I am going with elephant gray chalk paint and I'm covering up the bottom because the red still shows there wasn't enough room to add another layer of rope. Um, the foam brush does not get in all these little crevices in between the rope so I do get a smaller um, paintbrush. I finish up the bottom and then I also chalk paint two rows up from the bottom of the rope. And at first I wasn't going to do it, but I'm glad it did because I'm going to say dimension a million times in this video, but I like that it's not just one color and look at how beautiful you guys, I, nobody would ever know that I handmade that in my basement ever. I am almost positive. And you guys, it was a pleasure sharing my crafts with you. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you stayed this long. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, hit that bell for all so you're notified whenever I post new DIYs. What for are you, you going, Hank? Okay. Oh, you smell him? Sneak him out. He's there somewhere. I think he smells you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he would never eat you. Oh, yeah, that's really eating. More like licking. He oh, said, lift up your arm, little boy. I am taking this that I found at a garage sale. You guys, I found four of these, and they were a dollar each. They are huge. You can see how big it is when I lay it on my mat. Like these are so big. So I totally lucked out finding these. We're gonna use eucalyptus from Walmart and also a um, family sign from the Dollar Tree and sunflower bundle from Walmart as well. So I'm gonna take this outside and we're gonna spray it flat black. And I'm just basically gonna go around this in circles over here. And I kind of debated if I wanted to paint the sides black, like cover the whole thing or leave it. So I do take a little shot of like the sides 
because I was like, I don't know, I don't know. And I ended up leaving it. I thought I added a lot of dimension to the sign itself. So next we're taking our family sign and I was trying to pry these like staples off, but you really don't have to because uh, it doesn't affect the sign whatsoever. So I just cut the strings off and then um, I do take that outside and I do spray paint it with matte white. Just so you guys know, I did not film that part. And now I am going to be putting our hanger on the back. So what I'm doing is taking Dollar Tree floral wire it's super thin. I have it kind of in a V shape and I'm just trying to hook this through like one of like the little branches on there. And once I get it through, which obviously I'm having issues, so I take my weeding tool and I'm going to put that through and I'm going to twist this tight and I want it as close to like the actual branch as I could get. And I'm just going to keep twisting it. You know, I mean, use your better judgment, but I twisted it pretty far up and then I just bend it down when I feel like it's a good distance up and you guys keep in mind you can do this with any like if it's not a deep basket or you can use like the TV trays like the old school like wicker ones that you see I see them at the thrift store all the time so keep that in mind now for this wire hanger, I want it directly on the back. I don't want the wire showing. So that's why I'm not going up with this. And it actually worked great. And I am just going to follow the step that I took on the right side and doing it with the left side. Super easy to do. And I love that you can't see anything when it's hanging up. So it just looks like it's floating there on the wall. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so she done. Let's move on to the next step. I love the flat black paint too on this, super cute. All right, what are we doing next? We are gonna apply, fasten, whatever, our eucalyptus. So for these, you guys, I want you to keep in mind that if you ever have flowers or leaves or something and they're not facing the way you want, most of the time, a lot of the pieces on like bouquets or branches or whatever it is they come off so you can twist them around and kind of manipulate them to go in the direction that you want sometimes I forget about this and I get so frustrated and then I'm like wait I can move this around it doesn't have to stay like that so that's what I'm doing right here because a lot of the leaves are faced the wrong way and then after you're done playing around with placement these I simply just bent a little bit so that they would curve with the tray. Sorry, had to take a drink of my energy, you know. All right. And I'm taking that same floral wire, you guys, and putting um, it through the basket. Obviously, that did not work the first time for me. And I do one at the lower part of the stem and then kind of right before like the actual leaves start on these branches. I didn't go further up with it. I didn't feel a need to, but if you want to add like more security, if it's going to be on like a door, you know, that's like banging open and closed, you might want to. Um, but this is just going to be hanging on my wall in my filming room. So I'm gonna do that with both sides of these. And since my sunflower is going there, that was like a huge piece that I was like, need to clip that off. And you guys, you need wire cutters for these. Even Dollar Tree um, flowers, most of the time you're going to need wire cutters. I stole these from my husband's toolbox. Um, I will try and see if there's like a brand on them. And if not, I will search Amazon and try to find you the best deal and the best quality as well and link those in my description box. So here, and this wire is super easy to cut. It's very thin. So you see me just using regular scissors, don't have to do wires. And as you can see, I added another branch because I felt like the right side was looking a little skimpy compared to the left. So I just took a branch from another um, bundle and then just wired it to there. And now they look a lot more um, symmetrical and even for me. 
So these sunflowers, you guys, Walmart, $3 for all of these sunflowers. Now I know Dollar Tree has some beautiful ones right now, so you can definitely use those. But keep in mind the ones from Dollar Tree, the centers of them are so much smaller. And I just loved how big these looked, like real, real sunflowers. So jumping back to the family, sorry, you guys. Um, so this is how it looks spray painted white. I am taking just an old fashioned stapler, not a staple gun, old fashioned stapler, the wire from Dollar Tree. You could also, I'm sure, use zip ties or um, what do you call those? Pipe cleaners you can use as well. I'm going to put one in the middle of family um, on the Y and then the top of the F. And then I'm going to go back over it and kind of crisscross those staples just for added security. And I'm sure you could use a staple gun too if you had that handy. Um, but I was just being lazy and didn't want to dig mine out. So went with the regular stapler. So now we're jumping back to the flowers because I'm a hot mess and I'm just kind of everywhere here. So all I'm going to do is hot glue these on. I liked how the three looked um, versus adding more to it. And I am just applying these. You guys, my new gun, which is it's exactly the same one as my blue one that I used in the beginning of um, my YouTube channel. <sighs> so much better. So much better than the small one. The small one was definitely for like detail work. So I'm super happy with it. Um, and a little hot glue came through the back, but nobody's going to notice. So you guys, now that we have the wire on, I'm using these cups as just like a way to prop this up so I can get those wires through. At first, I'm trying to get it through the um, the middle piece, but like there is no give in this at all. So I have to move up the sign just a little bit to get it to go through the... Um, the basket, the wicker. I don't know what this is, you guys. Comment down below. What is this? Is this a, a tray? Is it wicker? Is it some kind of basket? I mean, what? And look at that. Oh my gosh, this is so cute, you guys. Oh, I love it. So I am now just tightening up our um, wires that we stuck through here, I will cut the excess off and then this sign will be done. Keep in mind, it already has that wire hanger on the back. You, could, you can't even see it. And it looks absolutely gorgeous. So you will see the outcome of that towards the end. But look at, look at how high end that looks. Guys, Come, this is huh. easy, easy, easy. So found these $1.99 at the thrift store. Please tell me you guys remember this like, trend I always remember my girlfriend my best friend Joanna growing up her mom had like all of this stuff in their house and I totally remember it <laughs> so nostalgia so there's four of these I'm only showing three because I already pre-made one to make sure that I was liking it and then I'm taking those paper flowers from the Dollar Tree ribbon from the Dollar Tree and I was just giving you another option to do like polka dots or something so all I'm going to do with this is I'm going to take the ribbon. It basically one roll will do two of these napkin rings and I'm just putting hot glue on the bottom and then one more time when I wrap it around to secure it and then we're just going to wrap this all around. Now you guys, so you're not wasting your ribbon, make sure you're like just overlapping right over like the gold part because usually when you're like going around in a circle and you're wrapping you tend to overlap that ribbon a lot and you don't need to because then you're using more ribbon does that make sense so I try and just overlap right at the edge where that gold is I do not use any hot glue through this process I am just wrapping super tight and then I will glue it at the end now you guys can also get those silver napkin rings and do this from the Dollar Tree. So look at how pretty that looks already. So I'm just cutting this and then um, we are going to just hot glue that end inside and you don't even notice it at all. Like it blends right in. Look at how pretty that looks and how like it completely changed it. And what's great about this ribbon is you guys, 
it can be used for any season. Like that's why I chose the burlap with the gold because it, it could go with anything. And now you guys, awesome thing about these. I'm not hot gluing these to this napkin ring. They have a wire stick on them. So all I'm going to do is wrap it around. And that's why I said these are interchangeable because I could take off this sunflower and for Christmas, I could change this up with some wire decor. I can change it for any occasion. And that's what is awesome about these. So look at how mm, darn cute. Look at how cute. I'm proud of myself because I am definitely not like a furniture repurposing gal. Okay, so you guys, I literally found this on Saturday at a garage sale for $5. And right away, that's Frankie Bell to the right. Look, at it's all wobbly, but I was like, this has great bones. And I already knew like just the top of it. I was like, oh, that is screaming to have something put on top of it. So all I'm doing right now is just taking an old shirt and I'm just cleaning all like the cobwebs, the most of the debris off of it. Then I'm going to take this apart with my screw gun. And there actually wasn't that many like screws and stuff like that, but it came apart super easy as you can imagine. And now I'm taking, these are actually the reusable cleaning cloths from the Dollar Tree and I love them. You just rinse them off, let them dry, and then you could reuse them time after time. So now the kids, of course, want to help out. So Everly is going to help me. I just have water on this, you guys, and I'm cleaning everything off that we took apart. And, well, I'm not. They are. That's what's great about having kids, you guys. <laughs> just kidding. Um, but they are great helpers. And then here they are. I was still filming and didn't realize it. And then I saw this and I was like, oh, my gosh. They crack me up. I love them. <laughs> that was fun. Oh, to be young. All right. So we're going to go in with Rust-Oleum charcoal paint. This is, I believe, my first time actually using it on a project. And um, let me add again, I like, this isn't like my, my thing. I am very impatient with furniture. And I find it shocking because I do wood signs and I'm super patient with my wood signs, like dry time, all of that stuff. But for some reason with furniture, I have no patience, you guys. So oh, there is a lot of mistakes. I'm surprised I even got this finished in time for the video because your girl was trying to take some easy way outs here. So I'm taping this off because there's my hot husband in the background. He is so hot. Okay, anyways, um, so I'm taping this off because I'm almost positive at this point that I want to leave the basket this pine color because when you see me with the decal, the wording is going to be this pine color, the original wood color. So I'm just taping this off and I'm making it pretty thick because since I'm using the roller, I don't want to chance getting the paint from the roller on this. So tape it off. I'm just using a uh, painter's tape from Menards or something. I don't know. And then I am going to use my little spongy roller. This is also from Menards. You guys, I do not know what it's called. Next time I take a trip, I promise I will link it. So <laughs> as you will tell, I am definitely just, this isn't my forte at all, but you know what? I did it. Uh, you guys don't paint with chalk paint. And I do this all the time because I want to be outside with my family that I'm like oh I'll just do it outside but it is so humid and it's hot and chalk paint does not like that combo at all so make sure you're doing um your painting in a cool area okay so I do the outsides of it I do do two coats on everything that I paint here and then for the insides are like the bottom inside of, okay, like right here. So I tried rolling those, but it wasn't really getting close. So then I take my Walmart paintbrush and I get that very close to like my edges and where like the wood meets each other because the roller wasn't obviously doing it for me. 
so I did that and then sorry this is like mostly painting I thought like I cut a lot of this out but you're welcome and let's see sorry you guys you could fast forward through this I feel bad for you I thought I cut all this out so now I got to get the insides of it and you guys are going to crack up. I am just, I should have, what I should have done. I didn't see those little knots that are on the side. I didn't know those came out. And of course my husband told me after I was done painting that those are just like decorative and there's screws inside there because that would have made life a lot easier painting. It's like, look at how I'm holding the roller. Like, if that doesn't tell you, I'm not good at this. Okay, so you guys, this is a decal I made. It says grateful is a happy place to be. Now I'm cutting this apart because anytime I laid this vinyl on here, it like stuck like right away. So going with one big piece was not going to work out for me. What was easy about this is it was um, compressed wood glued together so it had like the lines for me on top that way I could get an even um an even base like where to put my letters then I'm going to cut out my grateful and then I'm going to lay that right on top of my smaller lettering and this is permanent 651 vinyl I always use this when I'm stenciling on top of wood um because I find that it doesn't give me bleeds so there she is super cute gonna rub her down and then we are going to peel back that transfer paper this transfer paper you guys is from the dollar tree it is just called contact paper you could also get it at walmart as well now i'm going to paint over that with um this charcoal chalk paint again and i'm going to do two coats of this so i'm going to let this first coat thoroughly dry and then I'm going to come back and do the second coat. You have to make sure before doing a second coat with chalk paint that it is dry. And I promise my zipper is not undone on my shorts. They're just super old. I promise. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to weed. If you guys are not used to weeding, make sure you're being soft. You just gently have to take your weeding tool and kind of just get just a little bit of that vinyl up. You don't want to press too hard because then you're going to gouge like whatever piece of wood or whatever it is you're using. So go gentle, take your time, and um, it will come off nice and smoothly. Now you guys, it would be, I want you to keep in mind, we're using 651 vinyl, which is permanent for our stencil. If you were to leave this overnight, the chances of you getting off your vinyl smoothly is gonna be slim because it's permanent. So the longer you leave it on there, the more it's gonna to adhere to the surface. So you have to make sure that you're keeping track of it and you take it off when it's dry. So you guys, I am sanding this down, which I wasn't going to, but your girl wanted to take a shortcut and an easy way out. And I got like a clear spray, um, a clear, uh, what am I trying to say? You know what I'm saying? A clear coat but it was in the spray can and I sprayed and it left like you can see every line of spray on this it looked so bad and so I had to sand this down to get all of those lines off of there so as my mom would say if you're gonna do something do it right the first time because guess what it took me double the time trying to be lazy so then I kind of had to change this up because I wasn't planning on like roughing it up or distressing it at all but since I did it to the sides I had to do it to the top so I do get a sanding block and I just go around the edges and as you can see I got those edges distressed ran it over the top too so that's cute she's so cute okay now we're using matte clear by rust-oleum chalked you guys this clear for chalk paint is so great if you actually read the can it says that it is for like high traffic areas like tables things like that it's supposed to be really good now I don't work with a chalk brush very very often okay I usually use my chippy brushes this one I was like I'm gonna try it well when I dipped it in 
and initially put it on, I was like, nothing's coming off of this brush. Well, it seems like the clear gets up in the bristles. So then when I like press down on it, a bunch of clear came out and it was just everywhere. So it's a learning process for me, for sure, for sure. And then you guys, whenever you use chalk paint, let it dry overnight, 24 hours. Cause if you don't, and you go to put a clear coat over it, it will smear your chalk paint. And again, me being impatient, it only smeared it a, like a tiny, tiny bit. Um, but still just be patient and wait, especially if you're doing these to like resell or something, just take your time, but look how stunning everything i'm a firm believer that everything happens for a reason because this turned out great it looks great distressed and look at how beautiful that pine looks with the charcoal and yes and here's our other gorgeous sign all right you guys that is it thank you for joining me today i hope these inspired you to try something new and if you like the video please make sure to hit the like button and subscribe and until all right you guys so here are the paints i'm using it's just a gold acrylic paint and serenity blue rust-oleum chalk paint um i am just going ahead and i am free handing this because it had a nice ridge on it that i really didn't need to tape anything off plus i was way too lazy to do that and impatient so i take my heat gun out so that i can go ahead and dry that up and I have to touch everything because I like ruining my projects and uh, then having to go over and repaint them. I do that several times on this clock. So next we're going to go ahead. And you guys, I like painting towards myself. I kind of, I think, forget that I'm filming these and I'm just in my own little world like blah, 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 blah. So all of this, I'm just free handy. I'm not taping anything off. Like it doesn't need to be perfect. The clock already had like a, that crackly texture on it. So I wasn't too worried if it didn't look perfect. And to be honest, it's probably gonna stay in my house. So <laughs> I don't mind all that much. And I think this paintbrush you guys, I got at the Dollar Tree, I'm thinking, could be wrong, could be Walmart. Um, but I'm, I need to stop saying, oh, I'm going to continue to go ahead and paint this just being very careful of my lines, especially in the front, like around the clock, since I'm not taping that off, which I do end up getting paint on that and have to cover it up with some more gold, but that's going to happen. And since this paint, um, clock was already textured the flowers didn't really cause a big problem because as i told you guys in the beginning of this video they were textured it looked like they were hand painted i didn't sand it nothing i just went with the flow realized it was probably going to be a distressed looking clock anyways so yeah and um here we go all right heat gun you guys i love my heat gun I will use it every time because I'm so impatient. But even though it heats up, I always feel the need to still touch my stuff. Yep, there you go. Hey, that's wet. <laughs> Duh. All right. And I did do a second coat on it. I didn't film it because I didn't want to bore you guys with that. Um, so you guys, these rub-on transfers, this was actually my first time using them. And I didn't know if I wanted to go ham and like cover it with a bunch of stuff because I have several different ones. Um, but I was like, you know, what? start off simple because then if you make a mistake or you don't like it or it doesn't work, then it's not like a huge deal. So I went with these simple like char, they're almost like a charcoal black or something color. And they're just leaves and I am hooked. Like I wanna use these things on everything. I've already tried to think of a million things that I could use them on, but you simply just peel them off. It's almost like um, like temporary tattoos. You just put it on there and you rub your finger. And if I did have my like um, my silhouette little presser thing, I don't know what it's called. I probably would have used that, but just even using my finger it worked great and they do stick really well. So that was, I think the only issue was trying to get that clear part back up, but I really did not rub it for that long. And 
they work so well. The image came off perfectly. I didn't have any trouble with it at all. Like, I'm so excited about these. Now I'm like, okay, what else can I use them on? Because I've bought a grip of them. Anybody else impulsive like that? Because I'm like, ooh, these are nice. Don't even know if they'll work, but I'm like, but I got to get them all. <laughs> okay, just me? Cool. So... I'm going to continue on to the other side. I'm thinking in my head that I want to use more of them, but I end up, yeah, see, I'm like, mm, do, you, do you want to use more of these? These are nice and easy to use. But I end up just sticking with simple, which is not usually me, but um, I love the way that it turned out. I did not um, clear this because... I was unsure since it was my first time using the transfers, excuse my children in the background, I was unsure if it would smear or how it would react, but um, I did get advice and I probably will go back and modge podge over it later. Um, other people have said you could use clear paint as well. All right, now my favorite piece. Um, this is, I don't know what you want to call it, a cookie jar or something. So I use this brush. I want to call it like a stippling brush. It is from the Dollar Tree. It comes in a pack of three and this thing is awesome. I'm using, I think it's crimson red from Waverly and I am just, um, stippling. Yeah. Just stippling it, trying to get in all of those little creases. I want to cover it red. So I'm trying not to cover uh, like I don't want to leave any of like the iron look on it so I cover the whole thing and it looks amazing I at first wanted to go with white but I'm like your hands are going to be all over this so probably not the best decision so here it is dried look at that it looks beautiful look at that detail I'm so stoked I found that so I'm using which is now my new favorite the chalked matte clear it goes on so nice and easy and still looks matte um and I'm just doing the same thing stippling it all over using my heat gun because I'm impatient hello and you guys I'm obsessed with this thing look at how pretty that is so what I do with it here we go I haven't fully finished my coffee bar I am just starting it so I just put, it actually fits a whole thing of coffee in there, which I was stoked about, but there we go. I'm so excited about that. My husband's hotter than my coffee. That's what that cup says. <laughs> so here it is. I can't wait till I get it all together and then I could show you guys what I created. Okay, you guys, here is the piece we are working on. This is our first trash to treasure. This mirror is huge. It was 61 in length and I believe 28 inches wide. Um, I'm going to start by getting some painter's tape and painting all of my lines off so that none of our paint gets on the mirror. Um, I go ahead and do this throughout the entire mirror. Um, I am using a thicker piece because I just... I feel like it'll help me not get paint on the mirror, even though it did happen at some point. Um, this mirror also had like a little lip over the mirror. So I was trying to tuck the painter's tape like under it. And then once I was done, as you can see, I have a razor blade in my hand and I am just going through and those little pieces that you can see that are on like the piece of wood, I am just going by I'm razor blading them off and then if I happen to get a little too much off then I just get one of my scrap pieces of tape and get a straight edge and then kind of tuck it back underneath so that I do not get paint on the mirror by leaving a little gap on there. So I go ahead and I do this throughout the entire mirror and you don't have to worry about like I feel like cutting the wood or nicking the wood with it because there's definitely a distinct gap between the frame and the mirror on most pieces of wood or whatever you may be using. So um, just be cautious, go slowly, and please make sure you know what you're doing if you are playing around with the razor blade, okay? 
So here it, I just saw a gap, so wanted to make sure. And next I'm going in with painting. This is H Gray by Rust-Oleum Chalk Paint. And you guys, at first I grabbed, I don't know, I think it's called like a synthetic brush. One, it was way too large. Two, I don't know why I grabbed this because I never use chalk paint with this brush. Um, but I felt like it was really streaky. It was bulky. So then I did switch over to the Chip B brush, which is what I usually use. And that's what I'm using right here. I felt like it gave me so much more coverage. I felt like I could do it faster because the brush itself wasn't like ginormous. Um, so I end up just using that throughout the entire painting process and gosh, it was so much better. Oh, and let me tell you guys, I, I feel like I keep saying that I ended up after I painted this, I think it was the next day, um, after I had already done my two coats, I went to Home Depot and finally just broke down. You guys, I'm cheap. Okay. Um, finally broke down and bought a chalk br paint brush because those things are expensive expensive finally bought one and now I'm an addict because that thing was bomb it works so good um they have them too which I never realized I I think it was because my Walmart hadn't been stocked in a long time but they're finally stocked and they had chalk brushes there too and they it was a smaller version but they were only I think like the medium sized one was $12 and the Home Depot one I got was like 20 I believe so um oh, that is like a life changer and you'll see me using it when I put on the clear coat of it and I just feel like it gets in all of the grooves here you guys is a picture this is after the first coat and you can see it's very streaky um definitely if you were going for a rustic look you could stop after that and start sanding and doing your thing um, I did apply the second coat. I didn't film that. I didn't think you guys wanted to see all that, but I did use the chippy brush again. I didn't have the chalk paint brush yet and it turned out good. So you guys, please do not try this at home. Okay. So I tried this because I've seen people do this where it's the water technique. I don't know what it's called. And I first started off with like a wipe. That was way too thin. They were cheapy Walmart wipes. Then I got a rag and a water bucket and I was dipping and I was rubbing. And I've seen people do this so many times on YouTube, but I either waited too long for the paint to dry and it was like so tough getting this off. But I, you guys, I was committed. Let me tell you, I was committed to this process. At the end of this, my pointer finger was so raw and it bubbled up and it calloused like that's how hard I was having to rub but then like halfway through basically I was like well you're already committed you can't do something different because then half of your mirror is going to look different than the other half so girl you just need to keep on trucking I mean I do like it because um I did take out a sandpaper and it left like scuff looking marks on the paint, which I did not want. I wanted this piece. It was grand. It was beautiful. I wanted it to look elegant. I did not want it to look like crazy rustic farmhouse. Like I wanted this to be able to go into anybody's home with any decor and it look amazing. So it did look good. I just think maybe I needed to try a different process. Um, so after that, I got the shot back, just trying to get up any of the chippy pieces, any dust that may have fell on there from sitting in the garage. And I am going to go ahead and, um, clear it now. And I do use the Rust-Oleum matte clear, which I will show you in a minute. Sorry, you guys. I am so tired today. Um, I did use this, um, what do you call those? Mm, you guys, I don't know what that's called. But I did use this because guess what I found? The little chip bristles. So I had to pick them out. And then, of course, they made, like, little lines that looked weird. So I tried to scuff them out. That's the only thing I hate about chippy brushes is the shedding. So there I go. 
found another chip bristle. Sweet. Okay, so this, you guys, I actually just started using this. I had been using polyacrylic on my chalk paint like stuff for a long time, but this is great. It is smooth. It still looks matte. Ooh, and here's my brush. Isn't it beautiful? Ooh, I love it. It looks so good. <laughs> it looks so good. Uh, it works so good. And you guys, after that, I let it dry and look at how beautiful. And you guys, this sold within minutes of me posting it. Like, I'm not Let's kidding. Go to minutes. two. This, you guys, oh, meet Frank. Hank. <laughs> I did it again. So I got this, uh, this chair and this table from Facebook Marketplace. It only had three chairs, so I never used it. Um, so why not turn it into an office chair? So all I'm doing is unscrewing the bottom to get that cushion piece, piece of wood thing off of it. And then you guys, I love Simple Green. It gets everything clean. I hate the smell, but it does the job. So I'm just spraying it down because I, I think they've been in the basement since we've gotten the actual table. Because like I said, we never use the chairs to it. And I'm just spraying this down and then I do go upstairs and I let this sit for a while and now I'm just going to wipe it down and I am going to make sure that I get into those grooves because since it's been a while, there's probably a lot of stuff in there. It could be food, whatever. Um, so I do get in there and thoroughly wipe all of that down so that hopefully the paint goes this way. No paint. You guys, I will never use this ever again, ever in my entire life. Even if my house is on fire, I will never use that paint ever again. guys this is Hank you guys we're going to have a um, Hank moment here because I mean look at him can you see him go lay down no this is not how it's cut this is up can you go lay down why don't you lay down right over there okay Isn't he cute? You gotta love him. <laughs> Frustrated now, but let me tell you. You're literally standing right in front of the camera. No, I love you too. Okay. Time with Hank is done. Okay, so you guys, this paint. So I've used this paint on signs before as like a black chalk paint before I found Rust-Oleum chalk paint and it always worked really well. I've never used it on furniture, didn't even think twice about it. I got my chalk paint brush and I started going at it and I was like, this is one, it felt like super watery compared to chalk paint. And it says milk paint on it, you guys. So I don't know if I'm doing this wrong or what, but it was so streaky. It There was no coverage, nothing like chalk paint, like at all. And for this chair, I wanted basically a matte black. So in my head, I'm envisioning chalk paint, black, matte, chalk paint. So I just keep going at this and I am cringing. I'm like, oh my gosh. You can see everything through this and it is so streaky, which I did read the can and it did say may need like a few applications. Uh, basically, there'll be like texture or like stroke marks when you're done, which I was like, okay, that's fine. Because when you use a chippy brush with chalk paint, I mean, it kind of does the same thing, right? So I, I go with it, you guys I go with it. Um, these grooves were, uh, because the paint kept on settling down, like dripping down. And then I went in with a smaller brush, tried to get them out. You guys, this is after one coat. Look at that. Oh my gosh. I wanted to cry. If this was chalk paint, I, I probably would have done two coats just to be safe. But this was like, uh, oh my gosh. I was so sad. Okay, so I'm committed. So I'm like, I'm going to do two. 
I'm going to do two. Even had a conversation with my husband. I'm like, gosh, should I just spray paint this and call it even? And I was like, nope, I'm going to try it. I think it'll get darker, which as you can see, it did get darker, but it was still so streaky. And I should have known better because of those grooves. No matter what I did, it was the paint was going to settle in them, I feel like. Even though I was light-handed, it was still going to settle because I was still trying to having to get in there to paint them. Um, so I'm thinking, okay, this, this could possibly do. No, that's after the second coat, you guys. Look at it. I was so sad. And then I told myself, you know what? Maybe you should just do the third coat. Just do the third coat. The, the paint, pink can said, like, it could take a few coats, so... Maybe you should just do the third coat. Guess what? I didn't. <laughs> I was like, I am not going through that again. I am taking its um, primer matte black spray paint and I went to town on it and yes, it turned out great. Like it right away, I knew this was exactly what I had imagined. It was matte. It was black. It was so full coverage. It covered everything and it literally dried within like minutes. And then I took my favorite matte clear ultra coverage or I don't know what it's called you guys. Um, sprayed that baby on there and this was like instant satisfaction because the primer paint literally dried within minutes. And then this clear coat that I spray on dries within like 10 minutes or so so I was like oh my gosh after what I just went through I needed that it, it made my heart pretty happy I was super excited about it and it was so much easier there we go and then look at look at the difference pure black oh and it's matte it covered everything I was able to get inside the little grooves but as I'll show you right here, look at what the other paint did. Like how I said it was getting in the grooves and settling and then it was kind of dripping down. You guys, look at that. Okay, you guys, this, this cushion is so gross. Um, like I said, it's probably so old. And when I actually took this off, you guys, I'm using, I don't know what kind of pliers these are, but... It was, the fabric was super easy to take off because it looked like somebody just got like a regular stapler and just went to town on this little seat cushion thing. But um, I just go around, take everything off. Like I said, it was really easy to do. I was very surprised. I thought I was going to have to get other, I don't know. So you guys, I take this off and realize there's still the old like, cover on there which I'm like oh, I'm not gonna mess with a good thing then I thought I was gonna keep this because I figured well I could measure this onto my fabric and then I'll already have my pe you know like I don't have to get crazy and measure everything out well that didn't happen then you guys let's get this fabric all ironed up there were so many creases in it from being in the bag and I got this at Joanne's fabric you guys uh, I believe it was 40% off and I think it's like a, I found it under premium cotton or something in their holiday section. All right. So now I am just measuring this out. I have the cushion on top. I'm kind of eyeballing it. I'm making sure that I pull it tightly when I'm like trying to figure out how much fabric I need because I know I'm going to want to pull it tight. And you guys, before you do this, if you have like an odd shaped chair cushion top thing, make sure your the print of your fabric is the right way that you want it. Mine, luckily, the eagles were kind of sporadically on there. It's not like it was upside down or anything like that, but I did notice, you know, a few more were kind of faced up then down and things like that so just make sure the fabric's that where you want it to be and now I'm just using a staple gun it's my everyday staple gun use it for everything so you don't need anything special for it and I am just making sure to pull this fabric 
tight so I don't have any wrinkles in it so it doesn't like bunch up anywhere and I'm gonna keep going see how I keep on like pulling it I want that you want it tight 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 and keep going and mm, I could maybe put too many staples in it I don't know but better safe than sorry right see that oh and don't worry about that wrinkle it goes away I was really worried about it I was like that's gonna look so bad I'm gonna have to try and like sit an iron on it or something but it actually after like pulling the fabric tight and stuff it it went very well now corners you guys I did not do anything special with the corners I just kept trying to play around with the fabric um, so that it didn't bunch up or you know how like sometimes you see reupholstered things and it kind of looks like pleated on the corners I did not want that on the chair so I just kept on playing around with the position of the corners and I think I did a pretty damn good job because I don't feel like I got any pleats on it at all so I was really excited about that after all that I wasn't even recording that part but here it is Let's see if we can get no that's not any better I'm trying to get there's like tons Okay, now the last part, just screwing this baby back in. And I am so happy with it. So happy. Like, I love gold. I love America. And it turned out exactly how I imagined it. I was so happy with it. I just wish that I could have gotten a better video of how sparkly it looks and like elegant. I wish I had a ginormous house so I could display all this stuff like upstairs, but I don't. So um, I just made this for myself for my video space and you guys, I love it. I'm gonna get you a close up of this fabric. Um, I think, am I doing it right now? I don't know, no, yep. All right, you guys, thank you. Please make sure to hit that thumbs up button. And subscribe. here is our project that we are going to be flipping this Friday. I think it came out super adorable. It's very classic. It could be farmhouse. It could be, I mean, it could be whatever. It will match any decor with the black and the white. I love that we added the bottle opener. Um, you could use this for any event. And those rub-on transfers from Dollar Tree are absolutely amazing. And I can't wait to show you how you can use them. So I got this. I'm going to call it a caddy. It looks like somebody handmade it. I found it at the thrift store. I tried painting it gray. I've tried painting it white. And then it's been sitting in my basement forever. So I'm glad we get to give this some new life today. Um, I am using those plaques, which I got at the Dollar Tree, and then our rub-on transfers that are also from the Dollar Tree. I also have used those on a previous mason jar project, so if you want to see that, I will link those above. And we are taking the rope off, and I'm using my weeding tool. There is definitely a safer way of doing this, so I suggest you do it that way and not my way. I just use whatever is in arm's reach. And now we are going to paint both of those plaques with our folk art um, black chalk paint. I'm pretty sure it's called something other than black, but I don't know. And I use this one and I also use the Waverly ink as well. I do think I like this folk art one just a little better because it is seriously jet black. You only need one coat and it goes a long way and it's super thick, but it like glides smoothly, if that makes any sense whatsoever. Um, make sure to get all of those edges. I say that in all my videos, but I feel like every people miss the edges all the time. Um, and then what you don't see is I do go over this with a heat gun so that we don't have to wait a long time if you don't have one. Um, I highly recommend it if you do these DIY projects. 
And then right here, I am actually painting the top of my screws so they end up matching my bottle opener. And I thought it was black enough, but I did not like it um, like uh, side by side with the plaque. So I did go over it with the black chalk paint um, to make it darker. And I love the way that it turned out. I'm so happy that I ended up painting it because it actually made a big difference. And then after that, we are going to put that on the side and I'm just measuring where our middle is. And then I'm going to use my tool. I don't know. <laughs> it's getting later. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and screw those on. And as you can see, you can't see the screws because we painted the tops of them black. And look at how cool that is. All right, so our rub-on transfers. I am cutting these super close to the graphic. That way, one, you save all the other images that are on there, and two, I feel like when you cut as close as you can to the image you wanna use, you're gonna get a good size reference before placing it on the plaque. So as you can see, like I can totally see where I need to put it. And then I'm measuring it, which I don't know why, because I ended up just eyeballing it anyways. Okay, so I take this transfer off. This was my first time using the foil ones. And I'm like, what the heck? What? I was like, is this whole image going to transfer? Because it all looked like foil on the back. But um, I went with it anyways, and I'm glad I did. And it was super easy, just like the other ones. I kind of flattened it out with my fingers. And then I went over with the back of my weeding tool but I do end up start using just like my tiny fingernail and rubbing and you'll be surprised how easily these transfer onto whatever you're working on. It's not hard whatsoever. You just want to make sure that you get all of those little pieces wherever that image is you want to be rubbing. And as you start peeling it up, just go super slow because if you happen to miss a piece of it, then you can just lay your image back down, rub on it again, and then keep pulling. Um, you can just keep, sorry, I lost my train of thought. My kids were talking, um, but there you go. Look at how beautiful that is. It's absolutely gorgeous. I am definitely going to use these foil ones on more. Oh no, start another obsession for me. These would probably look, uh, I haven't tried them on cardstock yet, but I would assume they would transfer the same way. I'll have to try that next. So I'm just laying tape on this one because I'm going to be spelling something out and I want to keep a straight line. Um, so I start doing it with the end of my weed, um, my weeding tool, but then I just start using my fingernail and it works just the same. And again, make sure you're getting every little inch of where that foil is and then just slowly peel back. That way in case you miss a little piece, you can put it back down and rub it some more. And I'm just gonna go ahead and finish that. I put farm to table. And there we, oh, I love God. Oh, I love that. Have you guys seen Gold Member movie? Awesome Powers, yeah, no, no, okay. All right, so now we're gonna attach these. We are attaching these to our side and I am using this as a guide for when I come back to glue it on, making sure that it's in the middle. And then I am going to use my pencil to mark where that is on my tape so that I'm not writing on the actual caddy itself. And then we are going to use E6000 and hot glue. Um, remember that E6000 is, has kind of a slimy texture and it does not dry right away. So I'm using the E6000 to make sure that it lasts forever. And then I'm using the hot glue for an immediate hold. And make sure again, you don't get super close to those edges because you don't want that like gushing out the sides. So there's our first side. We're gonna repeat the same process with a farm to table. 
I am just putting something soft underneath it so I don't scrape it all up. I will probably, I think I'm going to try and just like do a spray paint clear over this. Not sure how it will react to the um, rub-on transfers, but mm, I guess we could try, right? And then doing the same thing. I wish there was an easier way to squeeze this E6000 out because it's like using all your muscles. All right, you guys. This is our caddy. It is complete. It's absolutely gorgeous. As you can see, I did not paint the bottom. I can later. But I think I'm going to keep this one too. Look at how cute that is. I just love the gold. Like it's so flashy, but it's like classic. And look at how pretty that looks. This is just like a little island we have in our kitchen. This can be brought out to barbecues when you're hosting a dinner. I, it's adorable. Make it for somebody for a housewarming gift. It fit paper plates, napkins, all the utensils. And yeah, we're done, you guys. I hope you enjoyed watching this. Please make sure to subscribe and give me a big thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And make sure to hit that notification bell because I will be doing a Christmas in July challenge tonight. Hope you guys join me. Have a good one. Bye.